Hey guys, Corbin here. I've made a few utensil designs at this point, and I've had some people ask me for a salad set. So, this is what I came up with. A fork and a spoon. My original spoon and spatula projects had a rose flower inlay. For this one, I wanted to do something new, so I decided to do a hibiscus flower with a lot of detail. I used Vetric VCAR for this project, and I have the files available. Link will be in the description in case you want to try and make this project on your own CNC machine at home. So let's get into the full detail on how I make these, along with a lot of the tips that I've learned along the way. So I start with a piece of 6-4 cherry, which should be about an inch and a half for the nominal size, which really means it's about an inch and a quarter in the actual size. And my project is designed for this specific stock height. It's fairly important that the stock starts at 1.25 inches, and if it's thicker, there will actually be some issues. So it's better to be a little bit on the thin side than to be on the thicker side. I like to use one piece of cherry and cut in half to use each side and have them be a matching set. I do pay attention to grain orientation and I try to make it so the grain is kind of just going with the flow of the actual utensil that I'm making. So I'm a big fan of using the T-Track to hold down my work pieces. And on my CNC table, I like to use offsets to do different operations at different locations. Vetric VCarve really doesn't have a great way to do offsets, and so I kind of fake it. So the way that I fake an offset in Vetric VCarve is I go to the material setup, and I check the use offset option, and set the X and Y offset for the origin of the workpiece to be the location on my table. And that way I can just use this particular offset again and again to reproduce the, uh, the same thing. I'm also a really big fan of these 3D printed hold downs that I did. They can be printed at exactly 1.25 inches tall and they hold down stock really well with just four of them. The great thing about those is if you hit them, it's not really a big deal because you can just print some more. Okay, before I go into actually machining stuff, I'm gonna talk about some of the experiments I did. I got a lot of chip out as shown here. And this is because Vetric VCarve isn't great at toolpath generation for one particular model. And the way I solved this is I realized the toolpaths would be better if I could cut the teeth of the fork out afterwards. However, if you just import a model and the teeth are in it, it's hard to control what's cut at what particular time in VCarve. So what I did is I decided to just draw vectors on my basic spoon shape and cut those out when I want a fork. These could be cut out at the appropriate time to avoid chip out. So it's tricks like this that I had to figure out to um, get a good result. So the base carving of this project is pretty simple. I use a quarter inch spiral upcut bit to do the roughing pass. And then I switch over to a eighth of an inch ball nose bit to do the final pass. I do the first two operations, the roughing and the finishing pass. And before I do my V-carve inlay, I use some blue tape on the piece where I'm going to cut it. This really helps to prevent chip out. I can then go and V-carve the female part of the inlay. I use a 15 degree V-bit to do this. After I carve the inlay, I can remove the workpiece from my CNC table. I tend to clean it up a little bit with just a bit of sandpaper because I don't want the fuzzies to stick it up a little bit higher and have any issues when machining the backside. Whenever you do two-side machining, you have to have a way of aligning the workpiece. And I do this by first drilling holes in my spoil board, which I did off camera because I've made this project a lot. And the matching holes are on the top of my workpiece. So I go ahead and put some dowels into those holes. If you're doing this project for the first time, you probably want to use quarter-inch wood dowels, but I've done it a lot, and so I like to use quarter-inch metal dowels because I can use them again and again without them getting destroyed. So I put the metal dowels into it, I flip my piece back over and put it on the work table, hold it down with the same clamps that I held it down before with, and all I do now is I drill some alignment holes again. And the reason I do this is so that I can put it back on the table to clean up the plug, which I'll come to in just a little bit. So the next step is to make the plug, and I use a contrasting wood. In this case, here's a piece of ingrained walnut. It's pretty important as ingrain in order to get good detail without having chip out. 
So one of the things you'll see me doing in the video where I'm setting stuff up is I have a little spacer. This just helps align things to exactly where I need it to be based on my uh, dowel holes, the dogs that I have. I use a different offset than what I did before and just set up a V-carve, like I mentioned earlier. And you could actually see the other one being machined in the background as I set up the plug to do the plug for this particular piece. I use my same 3D printed hold downs to hold down the workpiece. So this V-carve is not on a flat surface. It's projected down onto a curved surface. And in order for me to have the plug work correctly, it also has to be curved. It has to be basically the inverse of the shape I'm putting it onto. So first I have some tool paths that will generate this curved inverse of my spoon handle. Once that shape is done, I can actually make my plug with a V-carve inlay. So I V-carve with a 15 degree V-bit first, and I do it in multiple steps just to make it a little bit easier to machine out. After I do the V-carve with the 15 degree bit, I come back with my clearance bit, which is an eighth of an inch spiral down cut bit. I found that doing the V-carve with the V-bit before the straight clearance bit would give me better results. So once I have the plug done, I can take it over to the bandsaw and cut off the excess pieces. I then do a little bit of cleanup and picking. So I pick away any of the blue tape that's left on my uh, main piece. And I use an X-Acto knife to kind of clean up any little fuzzies or anything that might look like it might cause some interference when I'm going to glue the two together. So the glue up is pretty straightforward. I use waterproof glue because this will probably be washed a lot. I put it just only in the female part, the inlay on the main workpiece. I shove it in with a little brush to get in all the nooks and crannies. And then I carefully place the inlay, the male part of the inlay, the plug, into it. You can kind of feel it seat into it. And then I clamp it down. Now there are some tricks to getting this inlay to be really tight without any gaps but I will probably discuss that in some other video at some point. Once the glue dries, 24 hours, I take it back over the bandsaw and cut off the majority of the waste. So at this point, I can put the metal dowels into those holes on the bottom side of my workpiece and mount it back on the table exactly at the same position it was when I did the uh, top carving. This allows me to do the cleanup pass. The cleanup pass for the plug is exactly the same carving pass as the main whole fork or spoon, but I just limit the area to be a little small uh, rectangle. It does a roughing pass, and then it comes back with the same eighth of an inch ball nose and does the cleanup pass, or sorry, the finishing pass. So at this point, I can take it off the table, remove my dowels from the bottom side, put them back into the top side, and mount it back on the table to do the bottom side of the uh, project. My CNC machine has an automatic tool changer, which I absolutely love. So it just changes the bits when I need to do it. I don't have to do anything. So just as the top side did a roughing pass with a quarter inch spiral upcut bit, and then it does a final pass with an eighth of an inch spiral upcut bit with a ball nose, and then I get the finished piece. All that's left now is to cut off the tabs. I use a multi-tool to do this, and if you look at this piece, you'll see that it's actually an epoxy fill of a rose. And if you do an epoxy fill, it's a lot easier than doing the wooden lay. And the trick is to just use a little bit of silicone caulk to limit the epoxy from going everywhere. Sanding's my least favorite part of any project. It's like the necessary evil. And V-carve is really terrible at leaving rough edges on the sides of 3D carvings. This is just a ramification on how that program works. And it just requires a lot of sanding to get them be smooth. And then you can sand more to get the finish that you desire. 
So generally, I'll start with maybe 100, go to 150, and then go to 220. After I sand with 220, I like to wet the piece. And I use a spray bottle with very clean water to lightly mist it. This raises the grain, which is pretty important on a piece that would be washed a lot and finished with some oil. You don't want someone to get it and use it and then realize that it's all fuzzy because they used it without you raising the grain. After I raise the grain once and let it dry, I sand it again with 220. Finishing these is pretty easy. I like to use walrus oil, which is just a cutting board oil, but any type of food safe cutting board oil like mineral oil would probably work fine. I put on a coat, let it soak in for 24 hours, and wipe off any excess, and that's all I do. You could add another coat if you've used it for a while and it feels like it's kind of getting a little dry in between uses. So that's pretty much it for making this salad set. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.